Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 8th of January. Now it's 20 to 7 in the evening Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my second update for a day in which I'll share a um, number of news that was reported by Russian media since first update during the day. And uh, also I will share with you latest report of Russian Defense Ministry on progress of special military operation during the previous 24 hours hopefully you will find this update interesting and if so please click that like button leave some commentary and share video with your friends it will definitely help to further develop this project uh, channels of this project on uh, rumble and on uh, youtube and on telegram also of course uh, well that's been said um, uh, before i continue with news let me make a little announcement as i said in the morning's update today on rumble i will have a first live stream i tested a live stream and it, it worked so hopefully a live stream will go well and uh, during the live stream i will uh, share uh next episode of uh, next episode of um, telegram reports which is program exclusively made for rumble and uh, this program is based on my reporting on telegram so news that I did share on Telegram during the day and uh, and my commentary on some of them. Uh, live stream on uh, Rumble will begin in a few hours time after I will upload this uh, update. And I will share notification. I will uh, share information about it uh, on my Telegram channel and also um, on community page on my YouTube channel also. Well, that's been said. Let's um, let's talk about news now. And uh, first of all, Ria Novosti's report, which is based on Russian Defense Ministry, that uh, this afternoon, uh, about five o'clock in the afternoon, Russian air defense systems shut down two Ukrainian drones over the Bryansk region. And if you take a look at the map, Bryansk region is here on the way to Moscow. So maybe maybe this was yet another attempt of the regime to conduct drone strikes towards uh, Russian capital. But Russian air defense systems were ready for such development and um, Ukrainian drones were shut down. Also, Ria Novosti is reporting that during the previous 24 hours, according to Russian Defense Ministry, air defense systems of Russian armed forces shut down five HIMARS missiles and uh, 14 other Ukrainian drones. So as you can see, the regime is uh, trying on daily basis to hit deep inside Russian territory. But yet again, Russian air defense systems are working quite well. That's news agencies report here about Russian missile strikes during the uh, morning time today. And uh, Russian defense ministry did share with public information, little bit detailed information about these strikes. And uh, according to Defense Ministry, this morning, Russian uh, Russian forces conducted um, strikes, pre uh, strikes with precise long range weapons, including Kinjal hypersonic missiles, mainly uh, against um, remnants of military industrial complex of uh, uh, Kyiv regime. So I did reported about this uh, strike during uh, in the first update today. And by the way, if you did not uh, have seen first update, please check that. Please check that video also if you have a time, because I'm not gonna repeat news that uh, I already reported in the first um, update. So let's continue now. Um, so rumors that were circulating in 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 internet during the morning time that Russian side was actively using Kinjal missiles. To conduct those strikes, those rumors become true, and Russian Defense Ministry confirmed that Kinjal missiles have been used. Although we don't have uh, exact information, what level of damage was done, and and to what uh, which industrial uh, uh, companies or facilities of uh, the regime. Anyway, let's continue. Rianovost is uh, reporting that um, well. According to analyst of French TV, uh, French TV LCI, Magali Barté, Ukraine is uh, risking, the regime is risking to lose Western support if they will continue indiscriminate shelling of civilian areas. Uh, 
for example in Belgorod uh, this is I guess one of the first if not the first uh, instance when uh, Western media outlet is acknowledging that Kyiv regime is indiscriminately shelling civilians in uh, in Russia, indiscriminately targeting civilians, and uh, well, maybe something is changing in Europe. Maybe something is changing because usually, usually Western media outlets don't say or Western journalists don't say nothing about war crimes that are conducted by Kyiv regime. But it seems like. Um, at least some uh, some journalists in the western mainstream media maintaining they uh, some kind of some level of integrity and uh, uh, principles of journalism and uh, this in this particular case magali barte uh, find it necessary to highlight that key regime is uh, targeting civilians and it may influence western attitude towards Kyiv. Uh, Kyiv's actions and uh, eventually Zelensky and his associates may lose uh, all financial support from the West if this kind of strikes on civilians continue. She also mentioned that basically in actions of Kyiv, uh, Kyiv regime, more and more difficult to find a line when the Kyiv regime is conducting military operations against military targets and when Kyiv regime is conducting operations against civilians. That's how often Kyiv regime is targeting civilians, which is uh, absolutely right. They cannot do nothing on the battlefield, those cowards, and they are shelling civilians. That's that's all they can do, really. But anyway, anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to know that at least some media outlets in the West and some journalists are maintaining some level of integrity and uh, humanity, I will say, because usually they say nothing in the West whenever the regime is targeting civilians in Russia. Let's continue. Ria is uh, reporting that um, surprisingly, surprisingly, former head of NATO forces in Europe, US General Ben Hodges, hard to call this uh, uh, idiot a general, but he was a general and he was commander of uh, NATO forces, US forces in Europe. So uh, he probably had some reality check in previous days and uh, well uh, he did made a statement he did made a statement that uh, worst case of scenario is becoming reality for uh, for Ukraine and uh, and one of the on the battlefield and one of the reasons why Ukrainian forces are no longer capable to if they ever were capable to achieve anything but According to Ben Hodges, worst case of scenario is becoming reality and Ukrainian armed forces are unable to hold on to territories mainly because of the severe lack of munition and uh, weapons systems. At least, at least this individual, at least this individual beginning to acknowledge that uh, uh, Ukrainian forces are uh, nowhere near to uh, promises that was made, including by Ben Hodges, to Western public of success, successful offensives that the Kyiv regime will conduct, and and uh, at least he is acknowledging that uh, Kyiv regime is experiencing some significant difficulties, according to him, in uh, in several directions, in several sectors of the front line. Uh, Ukrainian artillerymen, for example, are forced to decrease. They work uh, the activity by 90% because of severe lack of uh, munition. And if artillery is unable to support forward uh, defense lines, then uh, these forward units of uh, Ukrainian armed forces also uh, would not be able to hold on to positions and will retreat, which is, um, which is quite logical. You don't have to be general to realize this. But yet again, I wanted to share with you this information just to highlight then even these delusional individuals, extremely delusional individuals like uh, Ben Hodges, even they are now having some kind of reality check because they, they talk so much crap on Western media. They, they said so much crazy things, how the regime going to achieve this and how they're going to achieve that and how they're going to defeat Russian armed forces. And now they are questioned. 
they have been questioned and they're they are basically forced to come out with some sort of justification and in this case ben hodges is blaming basically western ruling class western military industrial complex that they are unable to provide Q regime with uh, all weapons and all munition that they want to although uh, of course ben hodges is saying nothing about extreme uh, extreme uh, issues that Kyiv regime is experiencing when it comes to manpower to operate with the uh, weapon systems you need manpower and the uh, Kyiv regime is in a stage now when manpower is a bigger problem bigger issue than uh, weapons or no less an issue than weapons themselves or munition anyway let's continue also very interesting news you know was this and when many other russian media outlets did uh, report about this topic that according to wall street journal polish authorities polish authorities uh, were trying extremely hard to deny investigators information about movement of this so-called ukrainian diversant U ukrainian saboteurs who conducted uh, according to western propaganda uh, strikes attacks on Nord Stream pipeline so as you can see as you can see of course all this is bias by the way all this is bias uh, Washington is uh, you know some people in Washington probably did realize that uh, actions of Biden's White House were extremely damaging to US uh, extremely damaging to US worldwide especially in reputational uh, in in terms of reputation and uh, they come up with this false idea, false narrative, that it was some Ukrainian saboteurs who conducted this uh, highly sophisticated uh, maritime underwater operation that only several countries in the world are capable of. And they are actively pushing this narrative that it, were, uh, some, it, it was some sort of Ukrainian sabotage group, not Biden's administration, not U.S. Navy, not U.S. Uh, military personnel, we together with the Norwegian uh, side, but no, it was some some Ukrainian saboteurs. You know, they 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 are like Aquamans. They can dive 90 meters, 100 meters, uh, like it's nothing. You know, because they are Supermans, isn't it? And and the Western media outlet still continues to push this crazy narrative. Still. Uh, seems like some people maybe realize in in the west that uh, uh these actions of biden white house was extremely damaging for uh, u.s reputation and the reputation of the west in general because they conducted act of international terrorism and no one can trust uh washington or european capitals ever again ever again but uh, what is funny those very individuals in the in the washington pro for whatever reason are thinking that they can fool people they can fool world community if they will continue to push this narrative through their controlled media like uh, wall street journal that it was uh, not washington but key regime and some some ukrainian saboteurs which is i mean too stupid really who gonna believe in this crap man i mean who gonna believe in this crap but for whatever reason washington continues to uh, use their media uh, so-called media assets to uh, push worldwide this this uh, crazy propaganda that uh, no one really believes in but it's interesting it's interesting that uh, at least some people in washington some people in the ruling class in the west are realizing uh that washington us is losing very very significantly on the world stage and first of all in terms of reputation in terms of reputation no one trusts us no more uh us is seen as a state that are capable of anything and if that's the case then any negotiations any agreements with us mean nothing us is capable to attack even its own ally because germany this pipeline was combined project of russia and germany Nord Stream pipelines isn't it so they attacked not just russia but they attacked their own ally germany and world the world knows this perfectly well and uh, now no matter how how hard they're gonna try to push this propaganda on the world that it was some uh, ukrainian aquamans 
that conducted this uh, act of international terrorism on on Nord Stream pipelines no one gonna buy it man it's just it is what it is anyway let's let's continue Tass news agency is also reporting that uh, um, israeli israeli armed forces uh, 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 killed uh, one of the commanders of uh, hezbollah during the one of the previous uh, previous strikes as a kind of retaliation on hezbollah's retaliatory strike on uh, on israeli uh, israeli intelligence uh, base uh, as a result of you know uh, because of this uh, killing of hamas leaders in in beirut so this is this is downward spiral that these two sides uh, israel and hezbollah are in right now and they are constantly retaliating for actions of each other and it has to stop at some point it this has to stop otherwise otherwise unfortunately risks that eventually both sides will end up in full-scale confrontation will only only increase and it it will devastate both sides first of all and it may also provoke regional conflict it may provoke regional conflict and uh, and maybe exactly this uh, that that's that is what uh, western ruling class wants and you know why i said many times before that in my understanding uh, Western ruling class is desperate to cut off China from energy sources. Uh, for them, main topic, main topic of uh, discussion is uh, confrontation with China for Western ruling class because it's China that they see as a major competitor. Competitor, and uh, I guess their thinking is that if they will defeat somehow uh, China, then uh, they can neutralize uh, rising global south. And when it comes to uh, uh, economy, economical uh, relationships, of course, energy is a major point in, in, in economy. And the uh, Middle East is a major supplier of en energy, oil and, and gas to, to China. And that's why I think Western ruling class will use this uh, uh, escalation in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine to provoke conflict between Israel and Hezbollah. And we are uh, clearly see that uh, things in the, in in that region are moving in this direction, and then the very same uh, Western ruling class may provoke regional conflict involving Iran also. And if that's the case, then shipping in the Persian Gulf and the Ormuz Strait will definitely shut down, I guess, and uh, China will lose access to Middle Eastern energy. And uh, well. I did see some comments that Russia will help China with energy, if, if that's the case. Yes, Russia is supplying China even now with huge volumes of energy, but uh, there is no way Russia can increase its oil or gas production in the scale to compensate for losses of Middle Eastern energy to China. Uh, it's just um, China is receiving almost a similar volume of energy, if not more even more, by the way, than China receives from Russia. And uh, it's just, it's impossible to increase 100% production of oil and gas for Russia. It's just, it's impossible for any country to increase 100, 150% uh, production and export of uh, energy. It's, it, it takes years and decades of, of uh, investments and hard work to increase uh, step by step uh, level of production isn't it uh, but well it is what it is unfortunately middle east is uh, moving still moving towards uh, uh, escalation further escalation and also task news agencies report that uh, eu is discussing you will be begun uh, discuss its own military operation its own military mission in the red sea to secure maritime routes quite interesting news because eu is not military organization eu don't really have a military force uh, yesterday uh, i or this morning i did report that italy's uh, foreign minister uh, did come up with the statements that eu needs its own armed forces its own army this topic of eu army is uh, uh, you know discussed in 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 europe for a long time now without any 
uh, real steps towards uh, creating uh, EU army and that's why I'm kind of skeptical of EU military mission in the Red Sea Brussels don't really have any military assets what they how they gonna conduct <laughs> military mission it's gonna be uh, separate EU member states that will conduct military operations if Brussels will demand uh, such an operation isn't it but EU itself uh, are not military organization at least for now maybe sometime in the future they will have some military assets it's interesting what kind of formal form how they will formalize formalize this uh, military operation because yet again EU has no military command EU has no military and uh, how French militaries for example gonna operate under orders of Brussels I don't really understand but it's interesting to see with what uh, what uh, construction Brussels will come up to conduct such an operation let's continue and RT is reporting that German farmers are blocking roads uh, nationwide huge uh, strike huge strike in Germany and many other European uh, many uh, farmers in many other European states are in full support of uh, their German their German colleagues and uh, well let's read several sentences here farmers uh, all over germany are rallying for a week of protests against the government's austerity measures which they may leave their agricultural sector without support and force farms to shut down yet again are you surprised that uh, germany's government uh, policy policies of german government current government of germany is harming citizens of germany and german businesses in this particular case german farmers of course you are not surprised because uh, current leadership of germany is only i mean how it's hard to even call them leaders of germany they are puppets of washington they are acting under orders of washington they are basically representatives of u.s empire in germany and that's it Scholz is, uh, I mean, Scholz is not, not leader of German people. He don't care about Germans, and I don't think German people care that much about Scholz, because everyone understands Germany is a colonized country, occupied country by U.S., and uh, whoever is formally named as a chancellor or foreign minister or whatever, or whatever minister, all of them are basically acting under orders of Washington and well it's it's good that german people are finally beginning to act on this anti-german policies of their uh, government and uh, hopefully they will make some changes they will manage to improve their own elites and clean the elites from uh, assets of foreign uh, secret services and in that case, the one day they may have a government that will really act in best interests of Germany and German citizens. But from current government of Germany, you're not going to expect this. I mean, it's just, you know. RT is also reporting that China arrests suspected British spy. So some some uh, tensions going to increase between uh, between uh, London and uh, and Beijing in coming in upcoming days. Uh, someone on the name of uh, Hang Mo Mo allegedly passed state secrets to MI6, British military intelligence uh, or foreign intelligence. MI6 mainly is operating to collect inter intelligence data outside, so we can call it foreign intelligence service also. While uh, running uh, an uh, unnamed uh, foreign consultancy so china says it has detained the foreign national who was uh, who was allegedly gathering sensitive data on behalf of british secret intelligence service mi6 the uk has yet to comment on the allegation beijing's ministry of national security with uh, overseas both intelligence and uh, which oversees both intelligence and uh, counterintelligence said on monday that the uk spy agency used personal from the third country to conduct espionage against china the ministry identified the alleged uh, culprit 
as a uh, Hang Momo. This is probably fake name. They just don't want to uh, tell who this individual really is, which is understandable. Who is said to have uh, headed the uh, Un Versus consulting agency, but did not provide any further personal details. The MI6 recruited Hang in 2015 and established an intelligence cooperation relationship with him the ministry claimed so well this is the first time in a long time that Beijing accused anybody of spying for london usually it's Beijing and washington that, that are exchanging the uh, exchanging with this type of um, statements and are arresting spies of each other so well quite interesting quite interesting uh, Eventually, eventually, uh, London and uh, Beijing probably will reach agreement in a year or two, three years' time to exchange their, their spies. Of course, London never going to uh, officially uh, recognize that their spy was catch red-handed in, in uh, China by Chinese secret services. And, uh, well, this is it when it comes to short summary. A short summary uh, news wise and uh, now before i end this uh, video how long is update 26 minutes let me share let me share um, statements of russian defense ministry on progress of special military operation during the during the previous 24 uh, hours so in the morning the russian armed forces launched group strikes by high precision long range sea and air based uh, weapons including uh, by kinjal hypersonic air launched ballistic missiles at the ukrainian military industrial complex facilities russian ministry of defense uh, stated and when it comes to front line in kupiansk direction units of uh, zapad group of forces supported by aviation and artillery repelled nine local scale counteroffensives launched by assault detachments of uh, 32nd and 43rd also 115 mechanized brigades and 25th airborne brigade uh, also 95th air assault brigade near sinkovka Ivanovka, this is Kharkov region, and uh, Terny, Donetsk People's Republic. When it comes to when it comes to this sector, Kupiansk uh, sector, uh, as I mentioned many times before, main hotspot is of course uh, Sinkovka settlement. And uh, uh, as I reported in previous updates, Russian forces significantly increase shelling of uh, Ukrainian positions in Sinkovka direction, and also of course in direction of uh, in direction of Terny. In direction of Terni. Uh, although uh, I call, in my understanding, Terni geographically is more uh, soft, Krasny uh, Liman sector, but the defense ministry reported about Terni in in part where talk is about uh, Kupiansk direction, and this is Terni, by the way, Terni Yampolovka settlements, all, also Novo Sadova, and in these directions, I guess uh, because of the this uh, significant increase of pressure from Russian forces it's only a matter of one or two weeks or maybe even days at this point and Ukrainian forces probably will go back to right bank of Dnieper not Dnieper but Zheribets uh, river and uh, they will flee these uh, settlements let's see let's see how will situation develop in this area according to according to defense ministry as a result of uh, clashes in Kupiansk direction Ukrainian armed forces lost um, more than 110 110 military personnel two tanks two infantry fighting vehicles two armored personal carriers three motor vehicles two d20 howitzers and two gwosjika self-prepared artillery systems so significant increase significant increase of casualties and losses in in uh, manpower and military equipment on kupiansk direction on part of ukrainian forces uh, and uh, i guess uh, it will only escalate from now on and on daily basis, most likely we will see that the regime will lose on Kupiansk direction more and more uh, military units, more and more military personnel and uh, military equipment. When it comes to Krasny Liman direction, according to according to Russian Defense Ministry, units of uh, Tsand group of forces supported by aviation and artillery inflicted losses on manpower and hardware clusters uh, of Ukrainian forces near Tarskoe, Yampolovka and uh, Chernov 
червона доброва. As a result of uh, as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours in Krasny Liman direction, Ukrainian armed forces lost up to 230 military personnel killed and wounded, three armored fighting vehicles, eight motor vehicles, and two uh, uh, Akatsia self-prepared artillery systems. Also, very significant increase in casualty numbers on part of Ukrainian side in Krasny Liman direction, twice more than uh, in previous in previous days very same happened in kupiansk direction and i guess uh, i guess uh, um, clashes between the sides will only intensify from now on and the uh, russian side will methodically increase pressure on ukrainian armed forces on both sectors in kupiansk and krasny liman sector of the front line and eventually of course as a result of it uh, more ukrainian units will be demilitarized and uh, that means that uh, Ukrainian armed forces will have more losses in manpower and military equipment. When it comes to Donetsk sector of the front line, units of uh, South group of forces supported by artillery, uh, operational tactical and uh, army aviation inflicted losses on manpower and hardware clusters of uh, 24th, 28th, 42nd, 93rd mechanized brigades of Ukrainian armed forces, also 92nd assault brigade and 112 territorial defense brigades near Toretsk, Andreevka, Klishevka and uh, Krasnoye. Mainly flanks of uh, Bakhmut. Uh, as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours, Ukrainian armed forces lost on uh, Donetsk sector of the front line. More than 250 military personnel killed and wounded, two tanks, two armored fighting vehicles, two motor vehicles, and two D-30 howitzers. So, well, Donetsk sector is always active sector, so uh, casualty numbers on in Donetsk sector on part of Ukrainian Air Force are always high, uh, always high, and uh, well, main main uh, activities according to a report of Russian Defense Ministry during the previous previous uh, 24 hours were taking place in uh, on the flanks of Bakhmut in Andreevka Klishevka areas and uh, on the northern on the northern flank of um, Bakhmut also nothing have been said in Russian defense ministry's report about Avdeevka although several several channels this afternoon uh, did report did report that Russian armed forces began uh, successful uh, conducted successful uh, offensive operation in direction of uh, Severna and according to some military channels Russian forces managed to move forward from 500 meters to kilometer which is in this close range high intensity conflict is uh, quite a lot and if that's the case then Russian armed forces must be on the outskirts of Severna at this at this point although Yet again, Russian Defense Ministry did not report anything about Avdeevka direction in today's uh, update. Next is the uh, South Donetsk sector of the front line. Uh, South Donetsk sector of the front line. Units of uh, Vostok group. Uh, Vostok is a uh, east uh, group of forces supported by aviation and artillery. Repelled three local scale Contraoffensives uh, launched by uh, launched by 127th Territorial Defense Brigade of Ukrainian Armed Forces uh, north of uh, Priyutna, Zaporozhye region. In addition, losses were inflicted on manpower of uh, 79th Ukrainian uh, Air Assault Brigade near Novomikhailovka, uh, Donetsk People's Republic. As a result of clashes, uh, artillery duels, drone strikes uh, in previous 24 hours. Ukrainian armed forces lost in Krasny Liman direction up to 130 military personnel killed and wounded, two infantry fighting vehicles, three motor vehicles, one Gvozdzika self-prepared artillery system. So this is South Donetsk sector. And main hotspot is of course uh, Novomikhailovka, Novomikhailovka settlement. Today, Russian military uh, channels did report that Russian forces conducted successful offensive operations in direction of Georgievka. I did share on my Telegram page video of uh, heavy shelling of Ukrainian positions in Georgievka settlement, which is northern, north 
western side of uh, Marinka and uh, it seems like Russian forces are preparing ground preparing ground to conduct uh, offensive in the direction of Kuraho which is a uh, uh, significant uh, strong uh, stronghold of course in this uh, area although before Kuraho I guess Russian forces have to establish con control over the Krasnogorovka to secure its flanks so some significant activities will take place let's say this way in, in this area and when it comes to uh, South Donetsk of course uh, main hotspots are Novomikhailovka and uh, Vremovsky salient um, uh, and losses on part of Ukrainian side is also quite high in in pre previous 24 hours 130 Ukrainian military personnel was killed and wounded next is uh, Zaporozhye sector main hotspot usually is Orekhov bridgehead robot in uh, Verbovo areas let's see what Russian defense ministry has to said about Zaporozhye sector so units of the Russian group of forces supported by operational tactical avi aviation and artillery inflicted losses on manpower clusters of the 118th mechanized brigade of Ukrainian armed forces and also third Ukrainian national guard brigade near Rapotina and Nova Prokopovka Zaporozhye region as I said uh, Orekhov bridgehead uh, as a result of clashes, as a result of clashes in um, Zaporozhye sector during the previous 24 hours, Ukrainian armed forces lost uh, about 40 military personnel, one tank, two infantry fighting vehicles, three motor vehicles, and one D-20 howitzer. So, Zaporozhye sector for uh, quite some time now remains the most quiet sector on the on the line of contact. And um, today's information from defense ministry confirms this and the next is uh, Kherson direction according to Russian defense ministry units of the Dnieper group of forces inflicted losses on manpower and hardware of uh, 35th 38th uh, marines brigades of Ukrainian armed forces also 121st territorial defense brigade on the right bank of the Dnieper river near Mikhailovka Ivanovka Sublukovka and uh, Kashkarovka, Kherson region. Uh, also, of course, uh, Russian side is actively pounding positions of Ukrainian armed forces in uh, Krinky area on the left bank of the Dnieper River and uh, right next to Antonovsky, destroyed Antonovsky Bridge in the railway bridge in Oleshki direction, where the Kyiv regime is still maintaining this small, uh, irrelevant basically footholds irrelevant from strategical point of view but uh, from media point of view uh, the regime uh, don't want to withdraw and uh, acknowledge that they lost this uh, uh, so-called Kherson counteroffensive or this Kherson counteroffensive failed miserably and therefore they're continuing to sacrifice more and more Ukrainian military personnel in this um, direction on Kherson sector of the front line in general and according to Russian Defense Ministry during the previous 24 hours Ukrainian armed forces lost up to uh, 60 military personnel in Kherson sector of the front line killed or wounded uh, three motor vehicles um, in addition one AFU unmanned aerial vehicle uh, controlled post and one field ammunition depot was uh, destroyed and this is it when it comes to short summary of the situation on Ukrainian battlefield. I remind you, dear friends, that this report was uh, from Russian Defense Ministry about previous 24 hours. Tomorrow we will receive from Defense Ministry information about clashes that are taking place today. Uh, that's being said. I will end this uh, update. I will end this update now. And I remind you, dear friends, that in about two, three hours time, I will have a... Uh, I will try to uh, have a live stream on my Rumble channel in which uh, I will uh, present uh, next episode of uh, Telegram Reports program. That's exclusively done for uh, Rumble. This is it for now. Uh, hopefully you will find this video interesting and if so, please click that like button, uh, share um, comment on any topic you like and uh, share video with your friends on any of the platforms that you are active on and uh, if you can uh, 
and uh, if you think this channel is uh, useful interesting informative and deserves to exist please consider to support my work with small donations through paypal buy me coffee or by subscribing to my patreon page you can see links under this video in the description box or in the pinned comment this is it for now have a great day and take care